Prologue. It's coming, said the boy with the pale violet irises. His name was not Gabriel, but designated as such for convenience's sake. His true name, given to him at birth, was unknown. He'd been called Gabriel for as long as he could remember. Since he knew this was not his name, he didn't identify with it. The knowledge of his true name, if it even was still available, grew more distant from him each day. And though the boy had all his needs met, he was unsatisfied. He recognized he'd never die as a result of this lack. But then it also felt to him that because of this dreaded cosmic mishap, he would never, ever be who he was meant to be. 2. The words that had now faded didn't seem as if they were for Felicia. She had only just approached the entrance to the unfurled gaze room. It was a part of the ship which extended out some way, almost like a periscope in principle. The boy was not facing her, but the window into that unlit miasma, the ongoing universe. A sight which, as far as any of them knew, was being witnessed for the first time. Felicia noticed his head was tilted up. The gaze room's window was also a filtering screen that was able to adjust the view spectrum from high to low. Gabriel had it set to what a human eye would see anyway, darkness. What fun was that? No, she didn't think he could have been speaking to her. They weren't together. She had just arrived. Gabriel should have heard her. It wasn't like she was sneaking. Felicia looked all around. They were alone. She exhaled the cool oxygen-nitrogen blend of the ship. The adults always told her it tasted stale, but she had known no other kind to compare it to. The mixture of the experience felt like a spike in her mind's eye. How had he not registered her presence by now? It was all causing her to feel on edge, but she trained her line of sight to where Gabriel was looking. All that was between them and that ghastly view of space was human engineering. He wasn't looking at the screen, but above it. The glossy blue metallic finish that pervaded Arcus' interior, sourced from the finest nanotechnology humanity might ever muster. There was nothing of significance there, yet Gabriel remained fixed upon it as if, as if it was Felicia herself he was looking at. The girl was vain, usefully vain, the kind that administered cruelty without full recognition of the damage done. Felicia followed the ceiling up past where Gabriel was staring. The gaze room fit about 15 people. Its sugra, like a few other self-contained compartments on Arca, could be switched off. People could float around, even if it was bad for the bones. Felicia hadn't come there to do that, though. She couldn't do what she'd wanted to do and it left her feeling repressed. It was common knowledge that Gabriel was best left alone. Felicia and her friends mocked him, privately, yet ceaselessly. It was all anchored around one bad pun they loved to spout off. Gabriel needs his space. He was around the same age as Felicia, and the other boys Felicia's age spent their time in VR. But the gaze room was what captivated Gabriel's attention. Being alone there, just to watch nothing. How unstimulating. He was not a tall boy, but he was growing. In Felicia's view, he was plagued with freckles. His dull hair was the captain's approved style of long enough. Felicia's was not. It was more like how female presenting people of Earth had had it. Long and ostentatious. Straight flowing amber that caught the eye in a ship with such a bland palette of colors. The captain did not enjoy those sorts of indulgences. Though she was in charge and made the rules, there were enough women from Earth who just couldn't let certain traditions go. Their hair was what the captain referred to as far too long. That was when Felicia realized she'd been standing behind Gabriel for some time, waiting to understand, but not badly enough to acknowledge him. Gabriel, at least partly aware of her disdain for him, was perhaps pretending she was not there. Only, how could he do that if he hadn't seen who was behind him? And what was it he had said? She'd become so enthralled in his trance that she hadn't dwelt on his words and their meaning. 
he would elaborate if she was patient. She didn't want to speak to him. What did it matter? She didn't care about Gabriel. When she stepped forward, she did so with several fierce stomps. This did nothing to spoil Gabriel's focus. The adults often spoke about time discrepancies. How time moved at different speeds throughout the universe, relative to the time one experienced. But Felicia knew it was all theoretical talk, or the adults' idea of being coy. No, Gabriel had to be in the same moment as her. The same moment experienced in a different way. Just what was it that she was missing here? 3. Something on the floor caught her attention. A discreet noise broke the silence. There, she saw a tiny pool of liquid, a bubbling formation. It burst and settled right by Gabriel's feet. It seemed to be a light, reddish shade. The floor of the gaze room was uncommonly dusty, she realized, no doubt teeming with troublesome bacteria. Then she remembered the boy's words. It's coming. Felicia looked back up at Gabriel. She shifted and went to stand in front of him. At last, she looked down at him and asked, What? The question came out of her as if she was spitting out gum. Despite the stillness, she felt as if there was imminent danger. She crossed her arms below her chest and straightened her back. The boy still failed to register her. He just kept looking up. Felicia examined the spot for herself once more. Maybe she had overlooked something in her anxiety. All the girl saw was the ship. Thoughts of calling for help overwhelmed her, as Gabriel finally said more. With his view remaining pried to the ceiling, Gabriel said, It's... something. Another small word vanished in his reverie. Felicia's arms unfolded from her chest and fell to her side.